after the introductory class we are back again with the first chapter of class 11 that is the living world in the previous class we have discussed about the various kinds of activities which makes an organism living and we have seen that no single character is sufficient enough to define life isn't it there is a combination or interaction of various life processes which makes a living organism alive Today we will be seeing the next topic which has been discussed in your syllabus that is about the biodiversity. Now this biodiversity itself is so vast isn't it? The organisms which is all around us they are so diverse in their life forms living in different kinds of habitats be it an arctic, arctic tundra, be it a sea, uh, be it a mountain, be it a rainforest whatever it is wherever you go you will find the different forms of life residing over there. So this life forms forms the biodiversity of a particular area. Now uh, it has been estimated uh, according to your NCRT that almost 1.7 to 1.8 million organisms both including the plants and animals have been so far identified. Okay, And uh, it is also uh, assumed that yet more millions are there to be identified. Before they get identified some becomes extinct and when the people find the fossil of these organisms they study the fossil of these organisms. So while they were alive nobody noticed them, nobody identified them and gradually after their death they were being identified by the help of the fossils. Now man has been always you know inquisitive about uh, his uh, surroundings. So when he came to know about the various kinds of organisms around him, he started, you know, um, at first identifying them. Identifying by what? By means of various kinds of characters. These characters included uh, that whether the organism could move around or whether the organism was stationary, uh, how did the organism's morphological characters were. So these criteria were taken into consideration for the identification of an organism. So the first thing which hit the human brain was about the identification of an organism. And after the identification of these organisms were done, then the necessity of classification of these organisms arise. What is the reason behind is that if there is no, no specific, you know, uh, place for a particular species, how can we, uh, you know, identify that species properly, that uh, to what category it belongs, whether it belongs to animal, whether it belongs to plants, whether it belongs to insects or whether it belongs to, you know, microscopic organisms or whatever it is. So a proper or a systematic you know, um, uh, classification was required uh, for that organism. And once the classification and identification was done, the naming is necessary because, you know, a single organism can be named variously depending upon the kind of country that organism is found. In China, if you go, the same organism can be called in some different language which will be um, totally, uh, you know, unknown for you. If you go to African countries, the same thing can be known in different names. In India only, so many languages are there, so people know a single thing by different names. So there was a confusion. To avoid this confusion, the scientists across the world, uh, you know, they thought of, um, you know, giving a particular name. There should be a naming system. And this naming system was first, you know, origina originated by the help of the great taxonomist, uh, the name is Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus was the pioneer or you can say in, uh, in his book, The Species Plantarum, he gave uh, hundreds of names to the plants and the animals uh, around him. And his system of naming an organism is known as your binomial nomenclature. Now this binomial nomenclature, what it is? In, in this, an organism is given two names. The first name is called the generic name and the second one is called the specific epithet. And um, this uh, generic name and specific epithet uh, was given to an uh, organism, be it a plant and an animal. But uh, after his death, when the people um, across the country, across the world actually, uh, wanted to have a perfect, uh, that is your rules for the nomenclature of an organism, then they put forward certain rules and regulations for naming an organism, of course keeping in mind about the binomial nomenclature given by that of Linnaeus and uh, this included that the name should be in Latin. If the name is not in Latin then the local language should be Latinized. 
So that should be actually the naming of an organism. No two organisms should have the same name. Okay. Then uh, the um, uh, names should be in italics. The generic name and the specific name should be in italics. If they are handwritten, they should be written separately with a uh, underline below them separately. And uh, of course. Uh, there was law of priority that means who first uh, has found the name uh, that name will be accepted if suppose the same organism has been identified somewhere else in the world and uh, it has been named differently by a different scientist it won't be accepted so it, it's it's first come first who has said uh, the name first uh, his uh, name uh, will be accepted and also to respect the scientist who has identified this organism the uh, the abbreviation of that author will be at the end of the um, scientific name like for example the name of uh, the mango uh, plant is mangifera indica and it was found by Linnaeus so mangifera indica lin l i n now this lin indicates Linnaeus so similarly the, any other scientist the name will be at the end if the scientist name is um, you know we know the person who has identified it it is called orthocitation Okay, so these were the various rules of nomenclature which were proposed. So these rules of nomenclature uh, was accepted universally and the botanical name uh, was under the guidance of your ICBN that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature and the zoological specimen that is the animal specimen the naming was uh, under the you know guidance of ICZN that is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. Now classification itself is such a huge thing. So when an organism is identified, it is classified and it is named. All these three things togetherly forms the branch of biology which is called as your taxonomy. So taxonomy is a branch of biology which deals with identification of an organism, classification of that organism and the naming of the organism that is nomenclature and the systematic study of this identification, classification and naming this is known as your systematics. So these uh, you know all these terminologies are so associated with each other but yes we have to at first identify because once you can identify then only you can classify isn't it so there should be any uh, particular criteria or category so this categories of classifications which are uh, not a single step process it is a multi-step process it is a multi-step process there are many categories depending upon which a classification of an organism is done now this multi-step uh, way of classifying an organism is known as your taxonomical hierarchy and it was also proposed by your Linnaeus. now if we arrange an organism depending upon the various kinds of criteria into you know various steps of classification then we will see there are total of seven steps now what are these total of seven steps if we go from the decreasing order okay that is from the highest to the lowest you can go in either way you can go either from the highest to lowest or you can go from lowest to highest but it is better that you classify an organism from the highest to the lowest level and each category is known as a rank or it is known as a taxon of a taxonomical hierarchy so the first taxon or you can say the first uh, category um, is the kingdom okay so uh, suppose we take the example of human beings now human beings we know the scientific name of human beings is homo sapiens so when you see a human beings you find that the human being is moving isn't it so movement is a basic criteria so definitely if it is a basic criteria it belongs to the kingdom animalia so the first category of taxonomical hierarchy in case of human beings will be the kingdom that is your animalia that is it belongs to animals after the kingdom for the animals it is the next category is called the phylum if you consider any plants instead of phylum it will be considered as your division so phylum is the next step of uh, the hierarchy and it will be having yet more closely uh, um, uh, related characteristics that is uh, the phylum to which human beings will be belonging is called as your chordata. Now why are they called chordates? The reason is because they have the notochord in the early stage of development. After the uh, phylum, the next stage of the hierarchy, the next um, third step of the hierarchy will be uh, your, uh, that of your family. Um, so in case of the human beings, uh, sorry, the, it will be class. 
so the next step of the hierarchy will be class and the human beings since the body hairs are there they have the mammae that is the mammary glands so the class to which the human beings belong that is called as your mammalia after that will be a association of very closely related classes and they will form the order so the next step of the taxonomical hierarchy will be your order so human beings belongs to the order primates so we are primates and then there will be yet more closely related organisms which will be belonging to a family and we are belonging to the homo needs the family is homo needs then yet more closely related organisms what are they that is the erect posture well developed brain isn't it so that will form the next will form the genus so after the genus there will be yet more closely related organisms which can interbreed among themselves and that is called the species so this is the species is the final or the fundamental or the functional unit of taxonomical hierarchy so you count them it is total coming as your seven uh, taxonomical uh, you know steps or the rankings or the categories on which we can base this so it's kind of triangular thing you can make it either upright uh, means upside down or you can just make it upright so this is how the taxonomical hierarchy is uh, done when we consider any organisms you know classification and all those things so species is the most fundamental unit um, there can be closely related species yet after that also you know subspecies were identified varieties were identified forms were identified but we are not going for that because our syllabus does not permits that we are restricted only up to that of our species so species are a group of closely interrelated organisms which has the capacity to interbreed among themselves okay so that is called the species like homo sapiens so sapiens is the species like if you consider um, the, uh, the suppose in case of plants uh, say solanum tuberosum potato so tuberosum is a species and solanum, solanum is the genus now next is the genus genus uh, are uh, when uh, two or more you know interrelated species uh, can be under a same uh, genus like for example i told you about your solanum tuberosum is of potato uh, whereas uh, solanum a uh, lycopersicon is that of your tomato so both of them you see the genus is same but the species is different so genera contains uh, the related species uh, which are closely related but uh, genera of containing the different uh, species uh, uh, will not be you know matching with this like for example uh, if it is suppose your um, solanum uh, tuberosum solanum esculentum then uh, lycopersicon so they are all related to that of your solanum genus but if you consider that of your mangifera indica now this mangifera and solanum are not interrelated so the species which will be belonging to the mangifera they will be closely related and the species which are belonging to solanum they will be closely related so they are of less similar characters than that of the species so genera is one step ahead of the species so it will be having less similarities compared to that of the species see intergenerative crosses or hybridization is also done but always it is not successful even if sometimes it is successful it does not results into a fertile offspring as we have seen in case of your you know mule when we are crossing that between that of a horse and a donkey we are getting an organism but this organism is sterile so here uh, the genera is same the species is different similarly if you um, um, cross between that of a ligand um, ligand is uh, actually a cross between that of a lion and that of a uh, your tiger so uh, when it is crossed between them so see the genus is same panthera leo and panthera tigris but the species is different so when we cross such kind of organism we get an organism but this organism is sterile it is not reproductively active to give its next generation after the genus the next comes your family the family has yet the organisms assemblage of organisms which have less similar characters than that of the genus so more we go towards you know the uh, 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 the up upper end of that of the taxonomical hierarchy less is the similarities between the organism but of course they are related 
that is why they are classified into that you know particular systematic order so but the uh, more you go towards the lower end or the base of the taxonomical hierarchy more closely related characteristics are taken into consideration and you move you go more towards the upper end the lesser are the similar characteristics so after family then is your order in case of order the closely related families are found over there when the closely related orders they assemble with less similar characters of course compared to that of the family then they will form the next hierarchy that is uh, the next step of the hierarchy that is called as your phylum and finally when the various phylums having certain of course common characteristics but not that much they will be assembling together then um, uh, they will be fo uh, forming the kingdom that is the kingdom animalia so kingdom animalia you see it has it has insects isn't it it has your uh, uh, that is your chordates it has all the non chordates in it but yet they are all belonging to kingdom animalia that means they have some common characteristics they have heterotropic mode of nutrition they ha uh, the cell uh, the, uh, the that is the level of organizations of their body their uh, their cell their, their cellular components and then uh, their movement their locomotion their mode of uh, reproduction everything is taken into consideration and then we say that yes this organism belongs to animal kingdom. kingdom and this organism belongs to plant kingdom so this is how by the help of you know the various categories an organism is classified and is given a particular a uh, position in an ecological niche because every organism must have a, a proper position or proper place in the ecological niche so that was all about today's class in which we have studied about the systematic arrangement of an organism uh, what is taxonomical hierarchy how the identification is done what are the various rules given by the icbn and the iczn for the naming of an organism in our next class to follow we are going to study about the taxonomical aids now that is also a most important part of this um, chapter which is going on that is a living world in which we will be uh, seeing uh, or we will be studying about the various kinds of you know yeah uh, helping tools that will be actually helping us to identify an organism so that uh, whatever work we are doing uh, with regard to that organism can be properly um, published in any kinds of uh, journal or in any kinds of you know uh, renowned uh, books and all so that um, because without a proper uh, classification or a name of an organism uh, the research work goes all in vain so that's all for today's class thank you